Seven Pines Nature Center is a nonprofit organization, 501c3 nonprofit, and it exists for three reasons. One is to provide a, a preserve for native plants and animals. Uh, the second is to act as a living classroom for environmental education. And the third purpose is to provide a peaceful retreat for our visitors. We have about 486 acres that we manage and take care of. And uh, we've been in existence for 50 years. This is our 50th anniversary celebration. So today is simply just an open house celebration uh, about the 50 years that have happened and looking ahead to the to the next 50 years. So we wanted to make this a friendly, um, low-key kind of experience. We have some of our clubs on hand. Uh, we have a series of trail walks taking place led by our naturalists to the different parts of the nature center. We have some snacks and beverages on hand. Uh, and it's just really a chance to celebrate with so many people that have been so much a part of the nature center for so long. We're seeing people visiting today that haven't been here for years, but they came out because they knew this was a special, a special occasion to visit. So I think when people come here, the thing that they should really look out for, uh, we always send them to the A-Frame Bridge, which is a unique bridge that uh, you know, takes you from one part of the nature center to another part over a canal that connects a couple of the lakes. Uh, but also the, the tall grass prairie, I think, is very unique. There aren't very many tall grass prairies remaining in the United States, uh, in particular in Michigan. And this is a nine acre tall grass prairie. So grasses that grow as, as tall as we are, uh, and this time of year, late summer, the prairie wildflowers are in full bloom, and it's just a spectacular place to be. So it's, that's something I always recommend people go to. In the early 1960s, some people were living in this area and realized what a beautiful, special place this was. And they, the uh, Rip and Patty Shem bought 100 acres here where we're standing right now and wanted to have that place protected, preserved, and shared forever. And so they donated that to Michigan Audubon Society. They had the building, the initial building uh, constructed, and they set in motion a series of events that have led to where we are right now. So those two people, along with their good friends, Don and B. Nash, uh, made this all happen, along with, of course, countless hundreds of volunteers and staff along the way. But the vision um, and the commitment, uh, the belief that this is something worthwhile to pursue, and then the tenacity to make it happen um, is something that I just, I'm, I'm awestruck by.
very humbled to be a part of that now. I've only been here for six months, but I've come to appreciate very quickly how many people have contributed so much to this place. Um, well, I first came here probably around November of 2006, maybe November 2007. Um, wasn't able to react too much because it was November going into December. But a couple of years later, once I got a little more involved, I was able to see it in the spring going into the summer. Um, I was awestruck by it. I mean, this is really a beautiful, one-of-a-kind nature center. Um, I like the interpretive center that you saw inside. Um, I like the uh, arch bridge that you see behind me. Um, the many different types of trails. I think what I like the most are the um, all the different types of landscapes. Um, one time I saw an osprey. Um, the bird life is just amazing. I've probably seen, I'd say over the past four years or so, about four or five flickers. Pileated woodpeckers. Yeah, I've seen about um, five or six pileated woodpeckers in this direction. I highly recommend Seven Ponds in the fall. There is a beautiful panorama on the dock just behind me. And we have many different types of trees, including maples, um, aspens. And uh, I highly recommend it in the fall. In fact, fall is probably one of the more beautiful times to come, actually, and just take a walk. And I was very impressed with the uh, historic displays that I saw inside um, commemorating Seven Ponds. But uh, no, basically, I just came out because I haven't been here in a while, actually, but it's a good day to come out. So. The Butterfly Garden uh, was established a long time ago in a different part of the Nature Center, then moved over here, and the person who oversees this garden is a volunteer. In fact, all the people that, that work in the bu Butterfly Garden are volunteers that come out here on their own and just spend hours out here managing the flowers and planting and weeding and so forth, and they really enjoy it, and we're glad to have them out here. Uh, most of these are native flowers, and they are flowers that attract a wide variety of butterflies that we see fluttering around behind me and uh, so it's a very special place and 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 a lot of love and commitment has gone into the butterfly garden Butterfly. See her patterns? I know she's a monarch because she has this specific pattern. It was a big monarch butterfly. And it let me and it went on my hand and it was so cool. And, and, and then I put it on a flower and I gave it a little treat. And I know Monarch because it's my favorite butterfly. Two other kids that are 20 and 21, and so I used to take them out here to Seven Ponds years and years ago, and now we live in Chesterfield, so we're not that close. And this is Story's first time here, so we had a good time. We seen um, a bunny, right? Yeah. We seen three turtles. Yeah. One was a bigger one, and then a smaller, and then really little baby one, right? Yeah. And what else did we see? Lots of um, lots of butterflies in here, and we saw lots of dragonflies. Lots of dragonflies, yeah. I was here when I was a little kid, so probably when I was five or six years old. So we used to come quite a bit with my parents, and haven't been back since. So it's been mm -hmm. thirty years. One thing I hear regularly, maybe almost daily, is something like, I brought my kids here and now they're bringing their kids here. Or I brought my kids here and now I'm bringing my grandkids here. Or I came here as a child and now I'm bringing my kids here. It's a generational thing. Right now we're working on, I think, our third generation of visitors to Seven Ponds, which is really exciting. And I'm sure there's probably some fourth generation visitors as well. So how fantastic is that? This is, I uh, grew up in Elmont, so being here was part of childhood. So it was just a uh, 
I mean, we've always been nature people, I guess you could call it. Um, always involved in different things like that. And so, mm, wanting to encourage my daughter to, hey, let's let's continue, let's keep going and looking at everything that's around us and what can we learn from it and where can we make things better and just enjoy it. We moved up to Dryden when I was about 11. We started coming here and uh, not regularly, but it was nice every time we, sh we came here. It was you know kind of a family thing we'd get together. It seemed so much bigger when I was in second grade, but we had guided tours, so I think they took us on more than what I actually venture out on by myself. Um, because I remember a lot more than there is now. Mm -hmm. My favorite part is the A-frame bridge. I just think it's very pretty up there. It's a great place to just take a look out and see everything that this place has to offer. I really like it here. It's like, I like all, to see all the animals and the discovery room's pretty cool. I like seeing that snake. Yeah, even <laughs> though I pretty much screamed when I see it. <laughs> Sure, our environmental education programs are very um, widely varied. We have uh, kids who come out from schools uh, with their school groups, uh, with their classes and so forth. We have uh, weekend and weekday programs uh, for families uh, and children. We have um, classes in the summertime called Summer Field School. We have knee-high naturalist programs for very small children. So our educational programs are all across the board. Hundreds of thousands of school children have gone through our programming here. Uh, countless visitors have spent days on these trails, uh, miles and miles of, of peaceful retreat walking. And, um, and so everybody benefits from having this kind of place in their backyard. Well, biodiversity is, is one of the reasons why we try to maintain uh, the native landscape, the native plants, the native animals, because that is a very a delicate balance that, that, that those animals and plants are living under and those invasive species can really throw that out of out of balance. We've seen we've seen uh, what happened with the emerald ash borer here and there's basically no living ash tree still on this property. Uh, within the last 15 years or so every ash tree has died. We have other invasive species that are trying to take over various places in the nature center and so it's a constant battle uh, to that has to be waged by our naturalists and volunteers that come out um, to try to overcome those invasive species. Uh, some of our worst invasive plants are garlic mustard, uh, purple loosestrife, the crowned betch, uh, and a number of others. Glossy buckthorn is another one that's that's causing problems. So some of these plants are really a problem for us and, and our naturalists are constantly working on different techniques to eradicate or at least control and, and keep them from spreading. As people move around, we get more and more invasive plants and invasive animals, and those uh, plants and animals tend to throw the entire balance of nature out of balance. So it's important for us to try to maintain an environment, an ecosystem here uh, that, that preserves the integrity of the way things have, have developed over time, and that would be with the native plants and animals. So we try to um, pull and control as much of the non-native invasive species as we can. Well, it's, it's a multifaceted approach. Um, sometimes it's using herbicides, and we try to be very selective when we use herbicides. Uh, sometimes it's pulling. Uh, it might be um, cutting at certain times of the year to prevent the plant from reproducing. So there's a multifaceted approach to controlling and, and defeating these invasives. This is a 501c3 nonprofit organization. So we don't. What that means is we do not receive a single dollar of federal, state, or local government funding. All of our funding, everything we do here at Seven Ponds, everything we've ever done here at Seven Ponds, is done because of donations, large and small, uh, membership fees, program fees, um, grants from local community foundations and civic groups, and earnings off our endowment fund. So uh, we don't we don't receive any any federal or or, or any type of uh, public funding at all. It's all through private donations and supporters, people who care about the Nature Center deeply and believe in what we do and are willing to support that financially. And everywhere I go, there's a common word that's used to talk about Seven Ponds, and that's love. I can't tell you how many people have told me, I just love that place. 
and I understand why because I love this place as well.